Have you done things that you really regret and would do anything to undo them? Ruined a friendship? Abused someone who couldn't fight back? Cheated on your wife or husband? Got into pornography and hurt your marriage or relationship? Had an abortion or pressured someone else to? You know that was a baby and now you bitterly regret it? Were you a racist that hated or even physically hurt or jailed innocent people? Tried to change your gender and now there's changes to your body that you made that now you regret? As a preacher, did you steal money or cheat with a congregation member? Did you curse out a family member, leave them in anger, hold a grudge against them for a long time, then they died, now you can't tell them you're sorry? Bullied or hurt someone who took their life or died? Have you killed someone accidentally or even intentionally or done something else really bad? How can you forgive yourself? Can you? Or did you serve your country in war and your entire platoon got wiped out, only you survived? Did a disaster, war, or even a mass firing on your job hurt almost everyone you know, but you were untouched? Or were you in a car accident where everyone else was hurt or even killed except you? Now you can't get over the guilt that you survived and they didn't? Were you abused or molested and now have a nagging guilt, feeling that somehow it was your fault? How can you heal yourself from that? In this video, you'll learn seven things from the Bible that you need to handle serious guilt, shame, and deep regret and to forgive yourself for really serious wrongs. That includes survivor's guilt, where something really bad happened to you that actually wasn't your fault. For some things, you may never be completely free of guilt, but you can have some measure of peace and comfort, maybe a lot more than you have now. A few of these things will be hard to hear, but please watch to the end, you're worth it. First, actual guilt for serious wrongs we've done. Admit to yourself how bad it actually was, what damage you actually did. It can be painful, humiliating. It can be crushing. In the Bible, the Apostle Paul called himself the chief of sinners because he viciously persecuted the church until Jesus Christ turned Paul's life around. He admitted, I was a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent aggressor, 1 Timothy 1.13. Too many of us never really admit honestly how bad our actions really were. I've done it too sometimes. We'll say things like, I made a mistake or even get defensive thinking, why don't they forgive me? I said I was sorry, or don't judge me, or even it wasn't all my fault, they deserve some of the blame, or when none of those work, I'm only human. Of course you are, but that doesn't change what we did or the damage it caused. And if you're thinking like that, think about this as well. What did the wrong that you did feel like to the person that you wronged? Don't think about yourself, think about them. In the Bible, God doesn't think mostly about the wrongdoer. God thinks mostly about the person that was wronged, and we should too. Ask the person's forgiveness that you wronged. Someone you wronged may forgive you. I've been surprised at things people have forgiven me for. That's the best possible outcome. Pray for that. Sometimes forgiveness is immediate. Sometimes it takes time and comes gradually. Paul the Apostle faced that when he turned from persecuting Christians into being one. When he came to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him not believing that he was really a disciple, Acts 9.26. The people you've hurt might not believe that you've changed either, or it may take a lot of time and they may need to get used to the new you. And if at least they don't hate you in the end, that's progress and it may be the most you ever get, but it's something and it's worth trying for. Also understand, you may not be forgiven soon by those you've wronged, maybe not ever. There are some things that you may not be able to correct or make amends for, leave those to God. If this is helpful, please share this video and consider subscribing. Number three, ask for God's forgiveness. Turn to Jesus Christ if you're not a Christian or confess that wrong to God if you are a Christian. That is called repenting. It means to be truly sorry for what we've done. So sorry that we would never do it again, either then or now. Psalm 51:17 says, you will not reject a broken and repentant heart, O God. We need God's forgiveness. It's often the case for serious wrongs that we cannot completely forgive ourselves. No matter what we do to deal with it, forget about it, or live with it in peace, it is often the case that we cannot do that and it leaves a hole in our hearts. So we always need God's forgiveness for the really serious wrongs that we've done. And God can completely forgive us. If you're not a believer in Jesus Christ, here's a video that shows you how to be forgiven. God's forgiveness will save you from his coming judgment for all of our wrongs, not just the serious ones, but it will also help with filling the hole in your heart and in your life that really serious wrongdoing leaves in us. 
Number four, understand there will likely be consequences for your wrongdoing. Things may go wrong in your life, in your relationships. You may win back those people's trust, but you may not. You may never get those wasted opportunities back again. You may even experience the same wrongs you've done to others. That's happened to me. Paul the Apostle did terrible things to innocent Christians. I put many of the Lord's people in prison, and when they were put to death, I cast my vote against them. Many a time I went from one synagogue to another to have them punished, and I tried to force them to blaspheme. I was so obsessed with persecuting them that I even hunted them down to other cities. Acts 26, 9 through 11. Then after Paul became a Christian, he said about himself compared to the other apostles, I have worked much harder, been in prison more frequently, been flogged more severely, and been exposed to death again and again. Five times I received of the Jews 40 lashes minus one. That's 39 lashes. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. I have known hunger and thirst and often gone without food. I've been cold and naked. 2 Corinthians 11, 23 through 27. In other words, Paul got done to him after coming to Jesus Christ, all the things he did to others before coming to Jesus Christ. Forgiving ourselves or others forgiving us doesn't mean there will be no consequences. There may not be serious consequences, but there may be. Number five, when consequences for your wrongs happen to you, accept that that's what they are. In Judges 1, the Israelites captured a king named Adoni Bezek and cut off his thumbs and big toes. Then Abdoni Bezik said, 70 kings with their thumbs and big toes cut off have picked up scraps under my table. Now God has paid me back for what I did to them. This pagan king was willing to accept the consequences of his wrongdoings. All of us, believer and non-believer, could learn from his example. Did he enjoy the consequences? No. Did he accept the consequences with understanding and grace? Yes. Consequences for actions, even really bad actions, are normal and may be unavoidable, but we can turn that and use it in a positive way to help people or even to serve God better. And that's number six, make your life and the lives of others better. Paul used his regret for his evil past as a motivation to spread the gospel and to help and encourage as many people as he could before being killed for his faith in Jesus Christ. Another bad man in our day was George Wallace. He was a voice of bigotry and segregation during the Civil Rights Movement. Then he got shot. After that, he completely changed. He went to black churches and apologized for the wrongs that he had done to black people. He appointed many black judges, officials, and administrators in his administration. He worked the rest of his life to reverse the wrong that he had done to the black community. Whatever your wrongs, apologize to God and to the people you've wronged and live a better life starting now that's the opposite of the wrongs you've done. I'm doing that myself, trying to live a better life and to treat people better to make up for the wrongs I've done to people in the past. Again, if this is helpful, please like and share this video. Someone you know might need it now. Number seven, survivor's guilt. It's not your fault. If you were driving carefully and got hit by a drunk driver, that's not your fault. If you were molested as a child by an older relative, there is nothing you could have done about it. You didn't do anything to cause that. In fact, Jesus said this about people who do terrible things to children. Luke 17, 2, it would be better if a millstone were hung around his or her neck and they were cast into the sea because God will severely judge those people. Same thing with being raped, including date raped. It's not your fault, it's the rapist's fault. If your parents got divorced when you were young, it's not because of you. The Bible says children are a blessing and a gift from the Lord. Psalm 127 verse three, that included you. You are a blessing from God and a gift from God to your parents, not a cause for divorce. Married couples divorce for many reasons. Those reasons are inside themselves and between them. It's not because of young children. If you served your country in war and you got ambushed and your entire unit got wiped out and only you survived, that's not your fault. It could have been you too. There are some things, terrible things, that are just beyond our control. Again, I saw that under the sun, the race is not given to the swift nor the battle to the strong, but time and chance happen to them all, Ecclesiastes 9.11. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't be careful or avoid dangerous situations. You should. We all should. What it means is that no matter what we do or don't do, sometimes things come up that we just cannot control, that we cannot change or stop from happening. 
and the bad things from those things are not our fault. But Jesus Christ can help us to survive, to recover, and even thrive after terrible things have happened to us. Turn to Him. Trust Him. There are links to articles about survivor's guilt in the description below. If this video is helpful to you, please leave a comment, like it, and share it with others. And please subscribe, ring the bell so you'll know when every video comes out. May God help you heal your pain from serious wrongdoing, whether you've done it or whether you've survived it from others. Please watch these other videos to help you in your walk with the Lord and your walk in life. I'm Robert Ash. This is the Thinker's Bible. Thank you for joining me and see you next time.